uh, yesterday, the family and I went to the movies. Uh -huh. The first time that Santino and Lorenzo have been to the movies. Santino did the same thing that I used to do when I was a kid, which was like turn around and look at the light coming out of the projection booth. I do that today. Yeah. The movie we saw was called The Bad Guys. It is a cartoon based off of a series of young person's graphic novels. I'm familiar with this, yes. And we're driving away, and Christina says to me, did you find the fox and the wolf's relationship, like, really arousing? And I'm like, yes! It was one of the sexiest relationships I've ever seen in a movie. Jessica Rabbit, you don't really think about her having sex with Roger Rabbit. Oh, you don't? No, you think about her having sex with you. I think about her knocking boots with Roger. You do? Oh, yeah. He goes... <laughs> <laughs> I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good. It might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to The Basement. Before we get to the movie, Craig, how is your son Lorenzo doing? Oh, he's doing fine. Good. You know, I like that kid. And I know a few things about him. Mm -hmm. I know he likes the Wolfman. Yes. And we've watched that on this show. Yes, we have. I know he loves Godzilla. <clears throat> and we've watched that on this show. Yes. There's something else he likes, though. He really likes King Kong. And we haven't watched a King Kong movie on this show. No, we haven't. So I think maybe we should do that tonight. Really? And you might not want to stick around, Craig. You might want to run for your life. Because tonight, King Kong escapes. Oh, no! This looks like it has a Mecha Kong. <laughs> I believe he's Mechanic Kong. Mechanic Kong. Released in 1967, KKE was directed by basement alum Ishiro Honda. Hey! And stars Rhodes Reason. Linda Miller, basement alum Haro Nakajima as the titular ape, and basement alum Mi Hama, who previously appeared in the James Bond film You Only Live Twice. Oh. This was a joint production between Toho Studios and Rankin Bass. The story is based on a Japanese television show produced by Rankin Bass called The King Kong Show. Japan has everything. I will now consult Variety's complete science fiction reviews to see what they have to say about King Kong Escapes. Dull but exploitable updating of King Kong character. He's a character, Craig. He's a character. I remember that summer stock audition when I did my King Kong monologue. It yes. did not go over well. No, it didn't. One thing we all know about King Kong is that he likes to climb up things. Mm -hmm. Well, your gift is a structure that Mr. Kong would not want to climb up. And also, it is definitely not Jenga. It is... Tumbling Tower Game, <laughs> which in certain parts of Canada is Je de Tour de Grinjolant. <laughs> your French pronunciation is impeccable. Merci. Burst your bonds, friends, and drag those knuckles on over to the old leather couch, where we'll be settling in for a bit of Japanese sci-fi enjoyment as we watch King Kong Escapes. reason. Now that is a name that just makes no sense in any language. We begin on the United Nations Submarine Explorer. This is Susan Watson. She's a lieutenant. She goes in to talk to Commander Nelson and Lieutenant Commander Namura. They are looking at pictures of an ape named Kong. This one's 60 feet tall. What do you think of him? I don't know. I'm Canadian, so I only know the metric system. He's on Mondo Island, and they're going to go and observe him. Gah! Meanwhile, a bad man is making plans. Doctor Who! But he's not a time-traveling fun guy. He's an evil Japanese madman. The world is ours. Who has created a mechanical Kong. He's working with this woman, Madam X. She works for a country. A certain country that shall remain unnamed. Remember, my country buys results. And she's interested in Element X. That's a rare new element that would allow anyone who possessed it to control the world. Obtain Element X, Doctor Who, and you Who succeed. are you? My who, government who, insists who, who, you succeed. I really want to know. Who, who you are you? My robot Kong is in position. Mechanic Kong is totally stoned. You can tell just by looking at his eyes. 
<laughs> they send the robot monkey under the ground to dig for the precious element and he breaks down because magnets hurt the magnetic mass has destroyed his circuits you've disappointed me doctor who my country that i'm not going to tell you what the name is our country is withdrawing all aid doctor i'm going to find the real kong he's not made out of magnets <laughs> I must ask that you reconsider. Too bad, so sad, bye-bye. Meanwhile, the explorer has been damaged. All stations, report your damage. Heather, what's your damage? Repeat, what's your damage, Heather? So the rudder's not working properly. They need to surface so they can repair it. The three of them take their little hovercraft ashore just to look around a bit. This little guy runs out, and he's saying, Get out of here, don't come around here. Kong is here. He says that it's taboo and that it must not be broken. He's also saying some filthy things about my mother. Which I don't appreciate. Bong. James Bong. <laughs> the natives call him King Kong. He likes to play ping pong with his <laughs> ding dong. <laughs> I had that joke developed when I was five years old. Just waiting here. You're a prodigy, my Just friend. Pulling it out of the pocket right now. <laughs> this dinosaur comes bumbling by. He makes a big ruckus. And guess what that does? That wakes up Kong. You, me, we've had this date for a long time. He sees Susan, and he falls in love with her because she's a blonde lady. He picks her up, he makes goo-goo eyes at her, and she screams. <laughs> Kong's just clowning around. The dinosaur can do nothing but jazz hands. How is this fight even going to happen? He's gonna give him a titty twister. But Kong has fists that can't be beat. And he beats the dinosaur into submission. Respect, my friend. Respect. They're getting out of there. They're attacked by the sea serpent. No, this Kong! King Kong? No, the other one. <laughs> King or donkey? And now he's trying to get into that submarine. He wants Susan. He wants to get some of what she's got. I don't know how that is even... I, I don't even want to talk about it. Okay, forget it. Kong wants in. Oh, Kong is so in love. Look at him. He looks like he's a lovesick dope. Please, I don't want to go with you. Put Kong in friend zone. Finally, Kong understands. So he puts her back on the boat and they go away. Bye. We're dropping everything and heading directly for UN headquarters in New York. We were supposed to go on a peace mission to stop the war in Vietnam, but we have decided against it because of Kong related discoveries. <laughs> we gotta tell them about the monkey. And we're gonna have to set up a research station here so we can observe all of this. One of the reporters, though, looks a little familiar. Madam X from the country. And she realizes, ah, this Kong is even more powerful than the other one. Hey, Doctor Who. My country is going to grant you more time. I'm going to capture that Kong. I'm going to have him dig up Element X. Can he stand the radiation? Of course, he's Kong. Radiation's nothing to him. They call me Doctor Who. Good morning, how are you? I'm Doctor Who. I'm interested in Kongs. Doctor Who and his fleet of helicopters go to Mondo Island, and they're going to drop these bombs on him full of ether. They're going to put the great ape to sleep. The smoke isn't working. Bomb him with edibles. Gummies. We need gummies. And they need to go in his mouth. Because if they just land on the ground, it's not going to work. First, we draw a dick on his face. Next, we take funny pictures with him. And then we take off and leave. <laughs> Doctor Who is a bad man. They lift him up, they put him on a ship, they leave. Nelson and crew come to investigate. It smells like ether. Smells like ether. <laughs> they find the little guy. He's dying from bullet wounds. I think people have been here. Yolo. 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 YOLO! YOLO! He dies. See that he has a decent burial. Yes, sir. Not an indecent burial. Not like last time, Lieutenant. Nelson knows who he's dealing with. 
It must be my old friend, that international Judas, Doctor Who. Yes! <laughs> Kong is tossed into monkey jail. I first met Andy Dufresne <laughs> when I was imprisoned on the secret aircraft carrier of Doctor Who. Gup, 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 gup. Mm. Did you see our giant ape? Are you asking me? No. Why, I don't know Doctor Who. How is he going to get Kong to dig up Element X? You need a special light that you shine in Kong's face and you hypnotize him. And then you put little ding-dongs on the side of his head to give him messages. He digs and digs and digs. But Element X has a light of its own and that negates the hypnotizing light that Who showed him. <laughs> Kong sick of this podcast. And he gets mad. Close the tunnel, quick. Right. <laughs> A Japanese aircraft is calling the commander. I will connect you, sir. Mmm, mushy mushy. Our trio is rather effortlessly kidnapped by some of the minions of the doctor. You'd steal Niagara Falls for a drink of water. You'd steal Niagara Falls for a funny barrel stunt. You'd steal Niagara Falls for an old-fashioned honeymoon. You'd steal Niagara Falls so you could be in the United States and Canada quickly. You could go back and forth between them quick, quickly. That's Matt, Matt, no more. They're immediately imprisoned. Nelson is taken out to have a romantic drink with Madam X. Hello there. Hello. Miss Money Punny. <laughs> <laughs> My dear, we can easily get to all the world capitals. London, Paris. New York, London, Paris, Munich. Everybody, Everybody talk, talk about, about mm, pop music. E and J, gross. Carl? What who? May I see you outside? Where who? <laughs> Why who? And Namura and Susan are kept in their cell where cold, frigid air is pumped in. They're going to freeze him to death. Doctor Who and Nelson play a little game of chess. You can save their lives, but you have to work for me. And we're going to help Madam X and her country of origin rule the world. Let's see what the ice will do to your lovely skin. Hmm? It can actually, like, rip off your skin if it's cold enough. That's why I look so horrible. Kong can sense that Susan is in danger, and he starts Konging out. King Kong, massive, powerful, with the strength of 100 grape apes. <laughs> it's time to activate Mechanic Kong. That's not right. He goes after the hairy Kong. Totally baked. Totally baked. I'm leaving. She doesn't like Doctor Who. It's just that my country. We can't stand an international incident right now. I'm so sorry my country wasn't right. What country? Just tell us. So she frees the three heroes to hopefully stop King Kong. Kong gets to Tokyo. Stop your attack immediately. I'm sorry, who are you? Who are you? Oh, thank you. I'm Commander Carl Nelson, captain of the UN submarine explorer. Ooh. Ooh, big time well, Nelson. <laughs> he likes Susan. She'll be able to calm him down. Let me go. He loves me. He's my boyfriend. She talks to Kong. He picks her up. It's nice. And then Mechanica Kong comes by and he messes it all up. Kong! Mechanic Kong! Fight! There is a giant fight on top of the tower. I need a Rachel unit. Order it. A Rachel unit? <laughs> Don't send me a Ross or a Phoebe unit. Those are useless to me. Doctor Who and Madam X are having a confrontation. She died for her country, whichever country that is. That's right. And she'll be remembered as the woman with no name. <laughs> Susan, don't worry. We're just about there. To death. We're almost dead. This will all be over soon. Who knows who's going to win? You know who's going to win. Mechanical Kong is knocked off and he shatters like the collection of tin cans that he is. What up? Doctor Who is on his boat and he's trying to escape. Uh-oh. <laughs> There's docks for regular walking, not fancy walking. <laughs> Kong, go get the boat. Swims out there. Pounds the boat to death. Doctor Who is done for. <laughs> Kong swims back to... Mungo Island. Kong! King Kong! Yes, King! 
I think he's had enough of what we call civilization. And that is how King Kong escapes. King Kong escapes. Yes. I had a problem with King Kong's face. Oh, yeah, yeah. He just looked like a big dope. When he was in love with Susan, you could see it. But when he was angry, you couldn't see it. I think they needed McKenna Kong to make him look more lively. I really didn't think the human characters were that interesting. Particularly Commander Nelson, Susan, and Doctor Who. You didn't find Doctor Who interesting? I didn't think... I don't know. I thought Madam X was more interesting than he was. Oh, yeah. I would have liked to see Madam X be the mastermind of everything and who just be kind of her her, her right-hand yes, man. Yes, her dragon. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they did have a surprisingly okay fight scene at the end. When she pulls out the gun and he reaches his arm forward, it's almost elegant. There was something really tricky going on with Nurse Watson and her two men. Yeah. It was clear... That she wanted to be with Namora, is that She had romantic feelings yeah. for Namora, but they were being very cagey about it. Yeah, and yet Nelson kept sweeping in, putting his arm around her. And it was almost as though they were making it for two audiences, so that if you're watching it in Japan, you're like, well, that's the couple, Namora and Watson. While if you're watching in America, you're like, well... Those two are obviously friends, because he's Japanese. She's going to end up with Nelson. Yeah, and I didn't get the sense that... Nelson had a romantic interest in Susan. He's I felt like, like he was being more patriarchal. You're patriarchal and... Like, I'm going to protect you. He's being a 60s boss. But what this movie really is, it's not a Kong movie as much as it is a Bond movie. Who definitely was modeled after Dr. No. And then you have Madame X, who is so stylish. And that, that's the thing we forget about James Bond. There's the action for the guys and there's the fashion for the dates. She is changing her outfit constantly more than modesty blaze yes commander nelson is not a hero he's not a romantic prospect really yeah so he's sort of like we don't really know why he's there he's the authority he's the authority figure yeah. exactly. i am the un he almost fulfills <clears throat> the takashi shimura role from godzilla he's kind of an expert he can just speak this weird language for some reason he's a partner he's a father figure he d he's all all these roles yeah this DVD was sent in to our P.O. box by a generous viewer. I believe it was T.A. Epley. Oh. And there were two more Basement alums in this movie that I neglected to mention before. Paul Fries, the legendary voice actor, did the voice of Doctor Who. I think this is his fifth or sixth appearance on our show. Yeah, he's catching up on Christopher Lee. The actor who played Nomura indeed was in Godzilla. He played Ogata. His name is Akira Takarada. I think part of the reason why this movie works better than it should is because Ichiro Honda is directing it. He can take very mediocre material and elevate it. I love the way that Kong would roll over onto his back and immediately back up onto his feet just like a monkey does. Yeah. So much of Kong was fake. Mm -hmm. But seeing that gave you just this flash of like, this is a real creature. The final battle between them was kind of disappointing. Yeah, it was. I wanted the Mechanic Kong to have more bells and whistles. Like mm -hmm. Things that he would pull out. Secret weapons and things like that. He had the eyes. Yeah, he had that tool belt in his opening scene. Right. I really wanted Mechanic Kong to go Voltron on yeah. King Kong. King Kong escapes. We have escaped from it. We are done watching it. And now we are free to go to Seen It. Seen It. Justin Coleman. You should watch Color Out of Space. Incredibly photographed, directed, acted first half, then a bat shit crazy second half seen it. Not seen it. Color Out of Space is an adaptation of a Lovecraft story. Um, there have been movie adaptations of it before. There's a farm and fruit on the farm starts to go rotten because this meteor landed in a well and crazy stuff happens. Whatever's in the water, whatever's in the ground starts to get into their brains. And so Cage, his personality starts changing. And he starts doing this really weird sounding voice. This kind of like affected, kind of belligerent voice. And I'm listening to it and I'm thinking, who does he sound like? Travolta? Did they do it again with the faces? He sounded like Trump. Oh. When Cage gets a little older, he should star in a Trump biopic and he would be brilliant. That would be a second Oscar. Freeman Chips writes, Have you guys seen Love and Death? I love how Woody Allen uses a lot of Ingmar Bergman arty shots while having the characters say complete nonsense. Seen it. Seen it. The best of his pure comedies, this would you say? This is the funniest Woody Allen movie, meaning that it's one of the ten funniest movies ever made. It's really amazing how he balances highbrow humor 
with lowbrow humor, with complete absurdity, and doing like a very accurate Bergman parody. Yeah, like the movie's all these things and Tolstoy parody. The secret weapon of this movie, hiding in plain sight, is Diane Keaton. Wheat, fields of wheat. I mean, I'm dead, wheat. and she's talking about wheat. I would put this toe to toe against any Mel Brooks movie, any Monty Python movie. Uh, it is. It's just. It's hysterical. Yeah. And it, you really feel smart watching it because everyone knows just enough about Russian literature to get the jokes. Right. I like House. True story. In the Heat of the Night, the best movie about racism ever made. <laughs> Seen it. Seen it. Some might say Triumph of the Will, but uh, <laughs> it is a really good movie about racism. It's also a really good murder mystery story, which, of course, it has to be to elevate the lessons of the movie. It's a good buddy cop movie mm-hmm. where they start out, they're not buddies at all. Nope. It deals with a lot of nuance. There's really no one, no white person in the movie that thinks, I'm going to give this guy a chance because he's a fellow human being. They want something out of him. There's all these levels and grades of racism going on. Sure. And I think a really good way to portray racism is to show those levels it's to show that people there are some people who are bad to the bone there are some people who are just ignorant there are some people who are good people but they just are old-fashioned or they have a blind spot or something like that yeah. you see all of these facets of this problem and also no clear solutions and rod steiger acts with gum oh yeah he acts really well with gum this is why he chews and he's talking and then when he starts thinking about something he starts chewing really fast yeah or stops chewing and entirely. he stops chewing entirely, and then you know he's figured it out. I don't know the history of gum. <laughs> when did gum become a thing? I just rewatched Willy Wonka, and there's one of the four bad kids. Other than Vanity, her crime against humanity is gum chewing. When we were kids, gum was a bigger thing than it is now. It was, and it was like it was like smoking. Yeah, and it was loud, and it was obnoxious. Yeah. And you would take the gum. And drop it on the sidewalk and people will get it stuck on the bottom of their shoe. Yeah. Or you would take the gum and put it on the bottom of the desk and you're being a nuisance. So Roald Dahl was like, I'm going to kill her. <laughs> I'm going to make her into a blueberry and she might survive. <laughs> Jessica Minster, have you guys seen The Green Knight? I couldn't stand this movie and it was probably the worst thing I've seen in a theater in a long time. I love this movie, Jessica. I watched this a couple nights ago and Jessica, I totally agree with you. I hated it. Okay, I'm not going to get this whole movie. And then you just have to be like, okay, I'm just going to lean back and enjoy the bath. This really had the potential to be really cool. It's a knight. He's going on a quest. It's sort of hallucinatory and weird. And we ha and those, those chapter headings, mm -hmm. I thought that was a really neat storytelling device. But just right away, I'm just watching it and thinking, I don't know what's happening. I don't care. I didn't think Dev Patel was a good choice for the lead. I didn't think he quite nailed it. One thing I didn't like about the movie is about midway through, he takes some hallucinogenic mushrooms. He doesn't know they're hallucinogenic. And you don't know when it ends. Yeah. Also, you can't tell the difference between that and the rest of the movie. Well, it doesn't get any weirder then. Uh, other than, of course, he sees gigantic new giants, which are in the book. So it's arguably a, a dream for the rest of the movie. So it's a confusing thing to put in. What is this? Kong, Kong, Kong. Kong, 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 Kong. Hey, you should go to our website, welcome to the basement show.com. There are all of our episodes there, the entire back catalog for you to peruse. And there are PayPal donation buttons that you can click on and make a one time or rolling monthly donation to support our show. This helps our show, it helps us bring this content to you. A lot of our rolling monthly donors, they donate two or three dollars per month. It's very low amounts, but every little bit helps. Yes. I have a one-time donor here who writes, I would like to donate anonymously. You've got it, friend. Thanks, Jerry. Dude. You can also watch Unboxing, which comes out this coming Friday. That is more Craig and Matt chat. And we have all kinds of surprises and fun. And boxes. Take a look at that. And right now, take a look at this. You get out of here, Kong. Put me down, Kong! Okay, now you gotta give him a treat right away, or else he won't know that he just did a good thing. You gotta give him a treat right away. See, you're not doing it, he's not gonna learn. We need to get Jackson Galaxy in here to, to show these people how to handle Kong. <laughs>